There we go. So welcome, everybody, to Oops All Duels. Today is April 24th, 2022, and we're so excited. Uh, uh, after a little false start there, we uh, got our special guest host, Ridiculous Hat, on here, um, and we're so excited. Thank you so much for coming and joining us uh, to, to nerd out and talk about some duel stuff with us, man. Yeah. yeah, thanks for having me. It's a, it's a really fun format that I've enjoyed playing as my couch beer iPad mode. Uh, oh, and yeah. you know, I just as as a clarification for anyone listening, I'm really glad I have you two here as the duels experts because I am very much not an expert, and that's why I love the mode so much. So I think there's a really important part of games that we forget about as as content creators and lifetime players is it's fun to be bad at something and not feel a need to get better. Ooh. And boy, have I been testing that out in duels. <laughs> yeah, it's a great <laughs> mode for that. I mean, uh, I like this feeling of and the sense of discovery. Is something that you only really have when you start out in something, right? Once you get really good, it's just, just lost. Yeah. Yeah, but and duels, I love duels was... too, because like you have to make bad choices all the time, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I like not knowing what the choices are, and just it's it's a really great <laughs> mode for engaged players because I don't know what I'm doing, and I feel like I'm never gonna know. It's it's fun. It's essentially rogue. Every single run. You learn a new thing, right? You try out a new combo, and it's always been described by Atesh as the monster truck rally of uh, Hearthstone, and that for sure is it. Um, that said, however, we always start our, uh, our talks off with uh, some of the news of the week. Mm -hmm. um, and the big news this past week, I don't know how relevant it will be for du uh, duels, but our nerfs that are coming... Uh, this coming Tuesday on the 26th. And we're all hoping for a couple of duels things there too, but um, the only the only uh, communication we've had thus far is a Twitter thread from Gallen, um, who I'll just go read through uh, the, the uh, nerfs and we'll see if they impact duels at all. First one is Kael'thas uh, is getting a text box revert uh, to every third spell you cast each turn costs one. That's mm -hmm. totally irrelevant. Um, yeah. it's never used in duels whatsoever, but it's important for wild. Uh, people have been mm -hmm. up on that and it's been a disaster over there. So double thumbs up there. Uh, switcheroo is banned. Is that going to happen in duels too? Do we know? No, I think this is just a wild change. Uh, it's it's going to be around in standard anyway, because they, all they change, they change, uh, the effect from swapping all stats to just swapping health and keep it in standard. So I doubt it will go away in duels. It, it has not been announced. And the it, presumably then it would have the same text, the the standard re, mm -hmm. uh, nerf text. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The card is changed. Like it doesn't do the same thing that it did anymore. But also in wild, it still would be maybe those turn three, four mm -hmm. kills turn to turn four, five kills, which is mm -hmm. better but not good. So they're just like, just we're gonna make this not happen. That's fair. Um. Interesting. Uh, yeah, and it does pop up in buckets occasionally in duels. It's um, it's nice card draw um, for priests. It's not vital, though, so I don't think that this is no. especially relevant. It's not in starting um, the, decks at all. No, no, but it does show up occasionally, but not important. Um, the next one's for standard. Pirate Warrior Questline is getting nerfed again. Like, I can't believe people hate it this much, but whatever. The third, uh, the third <laughs> step is getting a third minion requirement, and that is relevant to duels uh, because it does show up in a variety of decks, including that brand one that's quite strong yeah. that you've been running. Uh, it's, been, it's, so, it's quite strong, yes. But I doubt it will yeah, change anything and for that deck at all, in my experience. Really? No. Like, usually you... It, Maybe in the first first few games you get the Juggernaut out a turn later, but in those games you never really play the Juggernaut and just murder them before that. So that doesn't That's really matter. True. And in later games, when I mean, it decks a bit more, uh, more suboptimal, less optimal, you usually mm -hmm. have enough breathing room to just play an additional one drop pirate and just slam her down anyway. This is usually my experience. That's true. Yeah, it's not yeah, going to slow it down. Always felt even. like. In duels, I always felt like this was a rally altogether now and Signet deck where with Signet, you get so many copies of all these pirates that you're not mm -hmm. really, it's like the problem is hand space to play Rokara. So mm -hmm. it might mm -hmm. even be better now that you get to play a few more <laughs> pirates first, but it just doesn't seem like it's going to be all that relevant because how many times you just like scamp draw two and play your second copied scamp and draw another two and then just fire out a bunch of blood sail corsairs and then play a bunch of free weapons like it's uh, i feel like the duels version is more about 
the quest line is to give you some inevitability, but you're never really racing to play Rokar, and you have a lot of games where you just chill with her in hand for a couple turns anyway. I doubt it's going to be all that relevant in this format. It's a good change in standard. The deck needs to be mm-hmm. less popular because it's interesting stat. At top 1k, the win rate that. of Pirate Warrior over the past week is about 47-48%. At bronze to <laughs> gold, 62% win rate. It is so, wow. so devastating for players that have a more casual relationship with the game that it needed to be changed. That's oh, amazing. Right. That's a crazy difference in stats. Hmm. So it's easy to follow the. It, it's an easy deck to play, right? But it's not that powerful, is what I I read out of that stat line. Um, it's not that and powerful a, uh, at at MMRs where people make better decisions, but it's fair. a it's a deck that it streamlines a lot of the process of what playing Hearthstone is, and also it gives the player an instruction manual on turn one of how to be proactive. And so, mm-hmm. like, the deck is really good at teaching people how to be better at Hearthstone, but not everyone in that game has that same advantage. So it's legitimately oppressive to the vast majority of the player base that just doesn't play as much. And mm. meanwhile, to people that are highly engaged, they're like, I don't even see this deck. Why did they change it? It's an interesting study in perspectives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, one of the cards that shows up in this Pirate Warrior deck is also getting a nerf for standard Puffer Fist. Um, is going from a 3-4 to a 3-3. That's really good. That's yeah. really big in duels because he does show up often in that 4 health is quite challenging to remove. Um, that but that 3, is, that, that... That card felt quite overtuned. Yeah. 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 So, because uh, you can finish people off. You could, it's a board clear. It's kind of sticky. Um, yeah, that that's going to be actually impactful. And um, I think Pirate Warrior will be a little bit less uh, prevalent in duels as a result of this. Um, mm-hmm. Switcheroo, as we said before, now swaps health uh, only instead of stats. Um, yes. And finally, Miracle Growth now costs eight mana up from seven. Um, I've literally never seen that played in duels. Is it played in any decks? Yes. In my favorite deck, Mycelium play? Druid, I played it a mm-hmm. ton. Like, uh, I just played it. I still have a run going with it. So that's going to impact that deck. How much, I don't know. I don't think it's that big a deal. Mm. You, you literally just put it in because it's card draw. You could just run anything else that draws cards. It's not that important for the deck. So I mm. doubt mm-hmm. uh, this will make the deck go away or anything. And that's probably the only deck I've ever seen it in. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> small impact. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. Fair. You think it'll still play it? Because I know that deck list is twi- is pretty tight in Mycelium Druid. It doesn't have mm-hmm. much room. Uh, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I was waiting for I that. Bet you didn't know you invited such a fun guy on your podcast. Oh, wow. It, <laughs> the speed at which they come to is really... Yeah. That's something. Yeah. Wow. I can go now <laughs> that, if you want. I can, I can that do must have, no, that. That must have been pre-trained. I just, it, <laughs> set up two days ago. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe you. I, I'm, I can only hope to acquire such power someday. Yeah. No, 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 you don't the, want this. Uh... You don't, it's, it's a curse. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a dad. I need this, okay? <laughs> we'll have a coaching session after the show. God, but you said the this next... is the last change. There's one more change that seems important, especially for Dragon. Very Shop, important. It does. It was just. It was, I'm just reading down the tweets. It was the last change on the uh, the the that tweet list. The follow. The final change that is a very big deal. And Gallen went on to explain for four tweets is uh, Kazakusan. Uh, his uh, activation effect is now going from if all other uh, minions in your deck are dragons. Uh, craft a custom deck to now if you've played four other dragons this game and that is a significant yeah. change because he's been thrown into so many of these control end game decks as just a finisher just as like a a C'Thun or whatever um and you don't have any dragons in but if you have an empty deck it activates as of right now and as of tuesday that is not going to be the case <laughs> so it's only going to be available to dragon decks which is very interesting but it's going to be significantly buffed for those dragon decks so I actually expect oh, yes. you will see more Kazakusans than before. Ooh, interesting. I, yeah. I guess like if you have that. Like because you, you can have, turbo yeah. this out now. You don't mm-hmm. have to wait it and also you're not screwed by buckets anymore. Exactly. Mm. I'm actually kind yeah. of afraid of this, to be honest. But then again, Dragon X are always hit or miss if you hit Dragon Affinity or not. Unless you're Elise and have the 
uh, academic studies treasure, and then you manage just doesn't matter to you anymore anyway. And exactly. Uh, yeah, so I'm a bit nervous about them. Hmm. I mean, interesting. If that's yeah, what people are yeah. doing with the lease instead of turn seven purified shard. Then, like, I think we're cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just hope we never go back to turn one uh, Tonk OTKs with Expedited Burial. And yeah, that was the single most there. toxic. <laughs> we'll be uh, fine. But they fixed that real quickly. Yeah, They they definitely fixed that quickly. Mm -hmm. And we'll see. I mean, so th th that's all of the announced nerfs. Um, and we haven't heard anything specific. I know Atesh went on to Zeddy's stream and said there are nerfs coming for yeah. uh, uh, duels. or but, you know, there, There's there's balance changes coming to duels in general. Um, but I he didn't that, attach right? a date to it, did he? Well, yeah. So we aren't sure. Is it... It's, it's a Tuesday. And that's how much uh, we know. Probably. I mean, we're getting <laughs> this patch on Tuesday, yeah. so this is going to be like a patch patch. Will this <laughs> Tuesday have the have dual changes as well? Like, I don't know. What, okay. what, what do you think really stands out right now that needs to be addressed immediately? I, oh, I saw okay. some, uh, some yeah. discussion earlier today of the Divine Shield meta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So first off, right now, the, the elephant in the room is Humble Blessings. That is just so Absolutely. annoying if it drops down early. It's not like it's beatable. I've beaten it plenty of times, but it's so boring to play against. It's so annoying to play against. It can high roll you out of the game immediately. And it's just all very frustrating to play against. And if you see it a lot, it's, it's every game is just three threes, three threes versus three threes. And that is so mind numbingly boring. It just has to go away. And then there's uh, the. the what already was academic talked about research. in the past. Exactly, academic research, yes. But there's also Twig Sphere, and now even more. Twig mm. Sphere and uh, the Shadow Cloth Needle, or what that card is called, the, the priest weapon. Yep. That can also break it. Yep. And Guff. Guff is a potential target. Some... Something... I, I don't think that they can change Guff, um, because yeah. they can't change it for Standard and Wild. Um, yeah. but something in the entire Druid Elise mana ramp package mm -hmm. has got to get fixed. Yeah. Um, they it's can, too consistent, and you, yeah, they can always ban a card even if it doesn't get changed. So, there's a small chance I wouldn't, I, a small oh. chance that Guff gets banned. It's, it's, a, it's a possibility. Just wanted to mention that your camera froze. Yeah. Mine? Uh, mine. No, no, Chad's telling you my I camera froze. I believe it appears and... that all the cameras are frozen. No, Matt's not frozen for some reason. What's going on? <laughs> oh, no. That's exactly because we can see each other in Discord. <laughs> huh? How did that happen? Did, I see. At least uh, I audio listeners, there is movement, I promise. We are not yeah. frozen. We, we are live. And, and, well, what is going on? If it, mm. Now that now it works Attention again. Attention says that Matt's camera transcends space and time, which is probably okay. True. I just had to restart those, and now it seems fine again. Yeah, looks good. Magic. I just had had to disable and re-enable the source for some reason. I, I don't know why. Okay. Yeah. Technology Myster mysterious. Yeah, we we are coming to you live it's, from it's the classic very turn it far off parts of and then turn it planet. back on again. <laughs> yeah, so I, I I'm not surprised that, that we're all on the the go and all doing stuff. I'm not surprised there's bumps. Um, but yeah, the the entire as we were talking about before, the entire Elise ramp package. The fact that there are multiple ways to break a uh, twig of the world tree. Now mm -hmm. um, there are. That you start off with academic research in your hand, uh, and that is a guaranteed turn three drop, and you at least get one mana, and frequently more than that if you, if you need it. Um, so you can auto ramp, which at a certain point, and then you also put an Omu, which can spell burst you. You are basically replaying your turn. It's not all that dissimilar to me mm -hmm. from playing against a quest mage who has gotten their quest activated. Yeah, um, and, you know, he's got with the Ember Caster and they get it, the, you know, the play their extra turns three, four times in a turn row. It's similar to that, but it comes down way sooner. Um, so something that can slow that down. 
and can uh, uh, push that to at least two or three turns later um, would be really ideal for me. So we have a note in chat. We figured out what can mm. slow that down. That is Atesh Bharataralu, who mm -hmm. can make academic research go to detention. Mm -hmm. So let's start. you heard it here first, folks. Yep. <laughs> the optimal source for uh, the freshest duels news is exactly this place. This chat. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I, From I hadn't been looking in there. I have, and I see the yeah, jokes, and I just uh, used to comment. <laughs> <laughs> I multitask. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So oh, yeah, while we have impressive. Atesh here, and while we have new information, this is the first like balance patch since we've gotten the the explorers into duels, right? How do you two feel like they they've impacted the meta? Have they been fresh? Have they been a nice addition? Have they caused balance problems somewhere in the middle? Curious oh, to hear small, what you think about it. There was a small balance patch earlier where they banned the wildfire because Reno was a problem. Um, right, with the Maligos change. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So there were some bans mm -hmm. in between because, yeah, the Explorers had a really big impact early on because Reno was annihilating anything that was board-based with a uh, Wildfire deck. With, um, yeah. what's it called again? The, 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 the Arcane Craft in a Zero Power. That just kept repeating. And if you managed to get more damage onto that, like, it would just break the game and uh, stop any board from ever existing. So... It's a good, good thing that Wildfire was gone. It has been causing issues for a long time, so they just overall banned the card. It's a good call, in my opinion. And you could probably still get it with some buckets and with uh, random card generation, but it's like less, le way less likely to show up. Now, the other <laughs> impact the new heroes had, of course, is Elise, which is top dog right now. Just beats everything with uh, either... Priest quest line with ramp and guff and everything and just activates the shard and wins the game by turn seven or something pretty frequently, maybe sometimes even earlier. So, the, yeah. But it, it can okay. whiff this deck. We, we, yes. we, we've been complaining about it a lot. I, I have had um, two 12 win runs with the deck in the last week. Mm -hmm. I've also had two... Uh, runs that only I was thinking it was like two in three, one in three, something like that. If you miss your draw, or if you end up getting uh, emerald goggles and somehow you know it, it's very easy to misplay and mm -hmm. you accidentally run out of seven drops in your deck all of a sudden, and you're you're sitting there trying to find one from resizing pouch or from uh, palm reading or something like that. But I, I have absolutely accidentally thrown too expensive of a card to the left hand side and and whiffed but that's also me just you know doing what hat does and, and having a beer or two and playing on my phone while we watch netflix at night so it's not really the high quality um <laughs> intense uh, masters tour focus that we all uh anticipate so misplays are, are inevitable but it, it is possible to to totally do that and if you end up like whiffing and and and, and misdrawing or whatever aggro can punch you down um, because you usually don't have very many taunts. So I've been beaten by the mech mage. Yeah. I've been meeting, beaten by um, uh, either the Vandar with promote, um, if they can get a minion to stick or Finley with the divine shield mm -hmm. uh, power up uh, a thing. If they can get a minion to stick and you just cannot remove it, you absolutely can lose by turn four or five. I um, mean, in fact, a lot of the times when I get to these higher wins, more of the, uh, more of the uh, opponents that I've been seeing have been the Finley uh, power yeah. up uh, one than the Elise one. And I, I see it with the Murlocs and I see it with the mechs. So there is a little bit of a, a option there and it's a little bit more board based. Um, mm -hmm. So take that yeah. for what you will to, to, to go back to loop back, not to be just complaining about Elise the whole time, but to, <laughs> to loop back to what you were asking earlier, Hat about how the introduction of the new uh, heroes has impacted the meta. And, and what the reaction to everything is. I think it's been great, um, quite frankly. I think that it, you know more content mm -hmm. increases the variability of the whole thing, and that that means that there isn't an obvious one-class domination. There, the, Elise is obviously very strong, and Finley's very strong, like we were saying, but mm -hmm. for like literally a year in duels, the only option to really win was to play Warrior. Uh, was to play Rattle Gore, and there were various like, varieties of that or whatever, but it got really, really stale and really specific because there wasn't 
um, as many different options and counters out there. But as you throw more, I think that uh, eventually, like if we, we talked about this a little bit last week, but if we had a thousand heroes in uh, in duels, mm-hmm. there would be clear overlap between a lot of them, and that's starting to approach with some of these dual dual class heroes. And some of the hero powers are a little similar, but each mm-hmm. one still has its own unique identity, and it allows us to go explore and feel like we are. De- discovering things as we go through these roguelike experiences because you're finding new combinations and you get the offerings and everything. I would love it personally if there was a little bit more randomness and a little bit more variability if there was like bucket draw drafting during the deck building construction initially yeah, or something. If there was almost like a, so something like that uh, to, to increase the sensation of discovering um, and of exploring, which is what happens when you are looking through so many different options and you're like, what is this combo and this combo? It reminds me of being a little kid and looking through my Pokemon cards or my magic mm-hmm. cards and being like, oh, this card would be so cool with this one. And if I played them together or whatever, it's a little bit like that during the deck building process. And the more people, the more heroes there are, the more buttons I can push before I'm playing against someone else, <laughs> the more decisions and the more things I can think about and the more creativity and the, the sillier uh, uh, combos I can think of. And I, I appreciate that. And I, I want them to keep on putting things in there. Eventually, they're probably going to have to pull some out, I would imagine, just to do a rotation, um, I would guess, to, to keep things balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's probably quite a while from now, um, I, I would guess. But I, I don't know how that would work. I'm not uh, a game designer. I also agree that like adding more mechanics or just changing up like phases of the mode, like deck building and stuff, could add a lot of variety, a lot of replayability, a lot of um, just interesting ways to change up how you play this game. But it will also make it more and more difficult to get into over time. And it's already like we are right. Mm-hmm. We have so much stuff. That there will then will also they also need to change things in a way that allows new players to get into it a bit more easily. I think so. That's mm-hmm. just something that you'll probably have to keep in mind. One one yeah. quality of life thing to encourage new players to come in would be uh, uh, enabling rerolls on casual. That'd be exciting. Uh, so we had those if, fire button. It's the retire button, but you have to go. Th- you have to. You have to drag fifteen cards over to my my deck. I got to uh, hit go. I've got to hit concede, and then I got to draft a treasure, and then I got to hit retire on all on my phone. So, I, I'm again old man yelling at clouds, complaining about my my fun <laughs> card game uh, uh, online. But if I had to push one button instead of like eight, that'd be cool. Is is I'm very lazy. This is what we're getting down to here. Uh, And Croak, I'm I'm glad you said something as well, because I really love the infusion of new stuff into duels, and I am a casual but frequent duels Mm -hmm. enjoyer. Um, And the best thing that that I think they did in a little while was removing the Skolomance ownership unlocks, which was kind of overdue, but they took care of it. They made the mode a lot more accessible. But unlocks in general, there have been so many times when I roll a hero... I go look up a deck list on Hearthstone decks, and then I go and I don't have the hero power unlocked. And I think the the intention of that system is to make me play more duels to get it. And what mm-hmm. it ends up actually doing is it makes me play in a way that I, I, I was excited to do the new thing, and then I didn't get to do that thing. And then I play less duels. Uh, I just I either draft a different deck and play a couple games, then go do something else, or I just close the screen entirely and go play a different mode. Because the immediate sense of disappointment that I can't do the cool thing unless I I pay my dues is unpleasant. Diablo wasn't around long enough for me to unlock everything. And even when pulling Drek and Van, like I didn't, there were like the first three or four runs I got, I didn't even see either of them. Mm -hmm. And then when I got the first one, which I think was Van, I didn't get to, no, it was Drek. I didn't get to use his cool hero power. I had to use the stupid keen reflex uh, whirlwind button. And like, it was fine, Mm -hmm. but I wanted to play with the other stuff. I wanted to explore a bit more. And Mm -hmm. it said, if you don't play this mode all the time, you just don't get to do that. Uh, so yeah. I love the Tombs of Terror unlock system, but I still, like, I wanted to play a power-up Finley deck, and I rolled Finley, and I hadn't unlocked power-up yet. And even if I went to Tombs then, the way the unlocks work is it picks when you roll the hero. Yeah. Even if I went and unlocked it in single player, I still wouldn't get to do it. So I'm hoping there's a way to make that a little bit more accessible in terms of my time, because Hearthstone has so much to do right now that I'd yeah. love to jump into duels and do the cool thing right away. Yeah, I completely agree. Like, the less barrier to entry there is, the better. Because this, I'm currently working on a like complete introductory guide 
to duels for YouTube. So just to help ease people into it. And like I was looking at all the stuff and just thinking to myself, hey, th 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 when is just imagining that I've never played this and I open like the mode and press the start button and I just see those five heroes and I I have no idea what's going on. That's already really daunting. And then you have almost, I don't know how many cards in duels are right now, but it must be thousands, right? You have thousands of options for your starting deck and you just really have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> you pick all these things and... <laughs> What's what's even going on? And then stuff is also locked. I guess then it doesn't really matter when stuff is locked. Like, I guess for the very super beginner, that's maybe even a good thing. So they are kind of funneled into less complex things, I guess. I guess the thing to... The, the, I, I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah. Maybe that makes getting into the mode less daunting overall. That's also... It's got to be... I, it was, yeah. It's motivation. Right? It's supposed to be like, <laughs> hey, I want to unlock the more powerful things later on, so you gotta grind a little bit. And there's like people enjoy grinding, right? People play Elden Ring, right? Uh hey, that, get is, it. Hey, hey, that is not the same. That is not the same. <laughs> I haven't grinded in Elden Ring for a second and I've played it for over fifty hours now. So what oh. are you even talking about? <laughs> I just <laughs> I just give you guys shit. I, I I don't have the time to play a, a sit down uh, RPG. It just it just, it doesn't work with our lifestyle. So uh, I, I I'm mostly being jealous of all of you who actually have played Elden Ring. No, people played mercenaries. How about that? Oh god. It's, I mean, listen. The grinding is the thing. People like seeing the number go up. People like feeling more powerful. People like getting new stuff. It's just a question of. I I follow the logic of narrowing complexity, but duels is not an easy mode. If you had one hero, one hero power, one choice, if you skipped the mm. entire hero and treasure selection and just went straight to the deck building, yeah, how many people are going to figure out what to actually do there without opening a website or failing miserably multiple times in a row? If there was no hero selection, no treasure, no button, whatever, you just got what you got. Yeah. <laughs> it would still be so daunting. So the amount of complexity yeah. removed here is not enough to be significant to justify locking people out when they are informed and do know what mm -hmm. they want to do. Yeah, yeah. I get that. Okay, I, that makes a ton of sense. I think it's mandatory to seek out some sort of resource to to do a yeah. little bit of research in order to do well. If you were just presented with, like, if you were a totally blind person or to totally uh, a, a novice Hearthstone player, and you were just opening up the client for the first time, and you just happened to hit duels for your first experience after going through the 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 uh, introduction the the, the jaina whatever tutorial um you would be absolutely steamrolled you would have a terrible experience i think i don't think that this is the mode for those people i think it's kind of buried for that reason too right like there, there's an expectation that you understand how hearthstone roughly operates um I, I, I would think I, I, I'm not sure what mm -hmm. actual UX decisions went in, but it, it, it doesn't it doesn't present as approachable to the absolute novice for sure. Yeah, like um, yeah. I think that's part of the appeal of the mode, right? Like it's this is a mode for highly engaged players, anyways, and yeah. I understand that Hearthstone mm -hmm. in general has kind of a new player acquisition problem. So yeah. I think the duels has made a lot of progress here. I don't mean to phrase this as a criticism that's keeping me from playing the mode. I'm playing the mode more because of the cool stuff they added. I just want to get to do the cool part of the cool stuff. Yeah. yeah. You want to drive that monster truck. You want to crush some cars. Yeah. I want to power up. <laughs> Hong Kong. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I, that, I, I think that's all we got for news. I don't know. Do you guys want to discuss the mech? Mage Drexar deck. Do you guys want to just keep chatting? Do you want to oh, open up for I questions? Have where where I do have you guys want to go? I have something. And, how uh, much time I do we got? To... What, what's the? Hmm? How much time? How much time do we got? I I I, I just I, I I'm free for an extended period of time, but I don't know about you two and and what sort of uh, a podcast we want to put together here. I'll be here until we I have to be done by eight p.m. Eastern. So <laughs> eight p.m. Uh, Eastern, which is. Four hours from now, I think. We'll yeah, I think that's <laughs> plenty of time. So let's just not worry about this. Uh, okay, I, cool. I would cool. like to talk about the roadmap for 2022. And I don't really need. I don't need to show it on screen because so far there's literally nothing about tools in it, and that's what I wanted to mention. And that is kind of surprising, 
First of all, because uh, in the, when we were in the first part of the roadmap, we got the League of Explorers. Uh, the biggest update Duels has had yet, and it wasn't even the roadmap. So, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> but I just take that as it was announced before the roadmap was uh, a thing, so we didn't, didn't bother putting it in there. And... So I'll just sure. take it as there's nothing big planned for duels for this year, just minor stuff. Mm. And there's a few. Uh, I would, yeah. I would anticipate that. I I, I mean, again, I I don't want to uh, uh, assume anything about people's jobs who may or may not be listening here, but it seems like I, I, uh, that could the. The labor assigned to the duels team, if I were in an ideal position, would be dedicated more towards balance changes and keeping the mode healthy rather than new content all the time. I think that what happened last year when literally there was a year without balance changes led to an unhealthy mode where people did not think that it was fun to go play and a lot of complaining about decks getting out of out of whack. Um, so if they could push out like every couple weeks uh, updates to, you know, a mana change here, a mana change there, keeping an eye on the stats, keeping the communication with the community open, saying, hey, this is not a fun meta. We need to have something changed. And that that is where the time was dedicated rather than putting out flashy, new, huge, amazing stuff, but not doing the balance changes. Um, I, I would prefer the balance changes is, is what I'm getting at. Um, and I think that that may be what's going on. I, I saw this sort of conversation happening a little bit on Twitter. And I remember tweeting a reply, hopefully that this exact scenario that I just described is what's coming along. And I believe Atesh liked the tweet. So uh, for whatever amount of uh, 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 rumoring and gossiping that's worth, that that's my my two cents on the matter. I don't think, I don't believe that I, I am not prepared mentally for a new big giant duels drop in the next, next calendar year maybe a couple heroes here or there but i don't think that there's going to be an entire refresh on the system i would assume i could be wrong like uh i had a few ideas what this could actually mean and uh, yeah maybe they'll just take more time to uh do the next drop because they'll allocate more of their time to keeping things balanced that is ent entirely possible but i noticed a few things which may make me think that uh, what's actually happening is that they are working on something really big. Like they have for the League of Explorers. And yeah, when we think in League of Explorers, we have to keep in mind that most of the stuff that they added was already in the game with the Tombs of Terror. It was just modified, essentially. So if they want to add something else of that proportion, they will take a ton more time and a lot more work than just adding something that was already there. And... Um, there were a few hints. Like first of all, we got these. Uh, we got this treasure there. I forgot the name. I keep forgetting it. Optimized polarity or something? Is it that that gives you the um, magnetic minions? Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Tier one uh, passive treasure. And after the you play a yeah. Uh, that uh, that uh, it was, it was, sorry sorry the, after you play your first mech in a turn uh, add. A random magnetic mech that costs one mm -hmm. to your hand. Currently, there are two magnetic mechs that cost one uh, in all of Hearthstone. There's yeah. Skaterbot, uh, which is the one one with Rush, and there's the one three, which I don't even know its name of. Um, and Glowtron. There Glotron, we go. Exactly. Yeah. So no. that treasure references magnetic one cost minions, but there's only two of them, and it seems kind of odd to me to just uh, throw a treasure out there that literally interacts with two old cards. It's just odd to me. So I give it a, 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 some chance that we'll get another ex mech expansion at some point in the future, maybe two expansions, maybe even next year, with new magnetic stuff. Maybe even a one-drop magnetic minion. And this treasure, because we all know that uh, the Hearthstone team is already... Uh, like has content made several years in advance, or planned at least. So they would know if something like that is coming up. And they could in introduce a treasure like that now. And this 
Treasure also features Dr. Boomart for some reason. Like, Dr. Boomart we have not seen before. So, I mean, we just the got... magnetic set was Boomstay, so I'm not surprised yeah. at all that there's a reference there. Yeah. Um, because that was the set magnetic was in. But yeah, I mean, it could be something related to this year. We have a lot of robots in Sunken City. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of robots. Yeah, we did. Could be more exactly. robots. Exactly. We got it. Magnetic coming and... back could be a thing. And we got the League of Explorers in this corset. So maybe next year we get the League of Evil in the corset. And then this stuff arrives. Yeah. Like, this could be completely possible. Also, the art is <laughs> hilarious. Yeah, Dr. Boom is always hilarious. Um, by the way, Artish in the chat, yeah, modified, quote unquote. Of course, I don't want to downplay the work you do. I have no idea how much it is, but I do expect it's a bit more than that, uh, uh, than just modifying something, sure. Uh, now, so that would be one possibility um, that they are working. Uh, right, that was what <laughs> that was what I was trying to segue into with the magnetic stuff. If we're getting the League of Evil in the next core set, maybe we'll also get the League of Evil as the next heroes. So there's some Possible. there's some yeah. stuff there because and there the League of Evil was in those um, events. There was the I forgot what it's called, but the, that event where they crash Dalaran into the Black Rock Mountain. Does oh, Dalaran Heist. Them? Yeah, I mean Dalaran Heist and Tombs of Terror were both. Um, those were the single player content uh, events. Uh, single player content in Year of the whatever year that was the the Rise year of the of, Dragon. Year of the Dragon. Right? Yeah, rise but I'm Shadows talking about Doom something. I'm talking about something else. Um, not the solo adventure, but there was a timed event. The Summer Festival, exactly. Where you could, um, that was a, like, it, it was in place of a tavern brawl where you could uh, take the League of Evil heroes into the Black Rock Mountain and fight the Black Rock Mountain bosses. And those were playable yeah. evil heroes and they had their own hero powers and treasures and stuff. So there is some precedent there that the League of Evil is already playable. And so maybe, no. Maybe that could be the big thing they're working on, and that's why it ta will take a long time until we get something. Because that sh seems like it will be way more work than adding the League of Explorers. And we'll find out. Right? Yeah. Like it's, and yeah. looking at these roadmaps, the, the biggest difference that we know between Year of the Griffin and Year of the Hydra is that Year of the Griffin was rough on the team and rough on the client. Uh, that they tried to do mm -hmm. so, so much that Ben Lee came out in the recorded video this year and said no new modes. That mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of what I think the 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 production side of the team needs to do in terms of the in terms of the client and the and the team is like give everybody room to breathe and work on some cool stuff, but it doesn't have to go on a roadmap and it doesn't have to be so strictly defined yeah. or be have milestones built for it. The team needs to be able exactly. to do some cool stuff. And if what Duels is doing, what Atesh and Brad are doing, um is adding characters that that are heroes that are playable and thematic with the current set and they do that every set that's mm -hmm. a bunch of forever work that they have to keep up with but that also yeah. keeps the mode fresh it can involve some hero cycling out some stuff cycling in maybe you know we could get to a point where if you have league of evil league of explorers van and drek you might not even have the base 10 class heroes anymore you could have yeah, a duels possibly. without the 10 class heroes and have every hero be hybrid if you want to do an event or something like that it would be cool and interesting mm -hmm. and really different, distinctive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are a lot of ways to go about it, but I don't think that the absence of a specific duels call it here is referencing the mode being under supported so much as the no. team receiving a bit more support and breathing room. Because it's not yeah. just the duels team, right? It's the live content team attached yeah, working exactly. mercenaries and tavern brawls and all that stuff too. Mm -hmm. And uh and Arena it's just nice to see that the team right. maybe gets to set their own milestones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 As, uh, presuming corporate uh priorities and uh reading into uh a, a pdf uh is, is a little tricky right because last year's uh roadmap you know it had a new mode and it turned out to be mercenaries which clearly dominated a huge amount of time from them and we, we just don't know what's going on behind the, the the corporate veil of secrecy so i don't want to presume anything but if if 
what's been happening lately is what's going to continue. Um, and we're going to be getting a small trickle of a couple heroes of time. I, I, I would not expect out of this mode, an entire refresh where everything retires mm -hmm. and you have an entirely brand new thing like that, that, that seems crazy, but like a slow trickle every now and then mm -hmm. one or two heroes and, and continuous balance changes that that's what I, I'm going to keep hammering this home until, uh, the crows come home balance changes uh, keeps it fresh. It makes us give a, it gives us an opportunity to, uh, make decisions it keeps uh us uh non-employed on our our zero dollar uh, uh podcast without ads here but it gives <laughs> us something to talk about each week and continues to do that uh, so we uh, uh I, I i would like that very much i would like uh, a meta that's constantly breathing and evolving and and uh, mm -hmm. alive um rather than big periodic drops i i, I would like yeah. a, a slow ebb and flow like, that's like also that, uh, there are so many ways they could do this, right? They could also just uh, just quote unquote is obviously always a ton of work. Uh, add something like uh, weekly. We'll just ban two or three expansions from the mode from deck building, and that's gonna rotate something like that. That's also a possibility that would like keep this fresh forever, basically. Yeah, maybe. You got to be careful when you're making. <laughs> like rapid changes to card availability yeah. because you have to always consider the more casually engaged player of if they mm -hmm. want to play the same deck two weeks in a row and they can one week and can't the other week yeah. and they have to go to some other website to figure out why that would be a very yes. poor experience and a very clear exit point so it's always For sure. duels is meant to be a mode that is inherently dynamic through its very structure to stay yeah. to keep highly engaged players with it and that's why balance changes and 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 passive changes and whatever are really really important because when your dynamic mode starts to feel stale then there's a really major problem because it's specifically designed to be dynamic but you don't want to mm -hmm. overdo it either because the, then you're only catering to people that play the mode full time mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. is much more dangerous because then the mode's player base dries up and then you get a lot yep. less resources and then those balance changes stop forever yep. yeah but we also and, have the advantage of having two separate queues so we could just add this mode to the more involved queue, which is uh, heroic, and leave casual just open. And it could still do maybe, these maybe. rotations in one mode and leave the other one just the same. Um, perhaps, but I, I, and I, I think that we're all trying to get to the same idea of keeping mm -hmm. it fresh, right? Exactly. And yes, it's just um, the, house. the, the Prob the, the most recent problematic meta was only a couple weeks ago was the mm -hmm. flame waves meta right and everyone yeah. like that, that meta was not around for that long in the grand scheme of things that was only active for like three weeks a month maybe like was we really really intensive uh uh when all the high winds were, were were flame waves and then they balance changed it and now it's a new you know broken meta but the, the issue is there's <laughs> so much content already that we probably I, I'm almost certain the devs don't know what the most powerful deck is going to be when it yeah. ships. Um, there, there, there's so many options out there that it takes a few days, you know, three, four, five days, and one or two really powerful combos that are relatively easy to follow and understand um, make it out there. And, you know, sometimes it's Humble Blessing, sometimes it's Flame Waves, uh, Direct Thar, sometimes it's the Elise quest line. I, I personally do believe there's probably one or two out there that are not found yet, but these become the popular things in the meta. And then that's all that we see for a while. And the the speed with which they can react to, to chop off the legs of the top guy so that there can be a constant churn in the meta, the, the better. the Because the, the, no one was playing, everyone was complaining about they aren't playing duels until Flame Waves is nerfed, right? Um, yeah. I know you did, Croak, right? And I think like a few other people did. And you want to avoid that, right? You don't want to have where a point where all of the most engaged players are saying, screw this, I'm, I'm all, I'm going to go do something different. So the, and, and dedicating your time to clearing that out, um, I think is a very valuable thing that I would encourage everyone to keep on doing. And I appreciate it. And I think we've been, it's been awesome lately. It really genuinely has. And I, I sincerely mean that. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So that's my, my thoughts, uh, on the matter. Um, are there any other what, what what fun decks have we played lately? Let's let, let, let's let's uh, what's the coolest deck you've had lately, Croak? What's the best stream you've seen? I can go first if I, I put you on the the spot too much right there. 
No, it's fine. Like I've I've had a bunch of cool decks. Some feel a bit too powerful, and I'm kind of sad that I put them out there because now I have to fight them all the time. But um, like the one I'm most happy with is the mycelium druid because that is all actually kind of difficult to play compared to many other decks. And yeah, it's a really cool deck. And and, and should I just get into that? And like the, uh, with the last major balance patch, they changed the marvelous mycelium to from mm -hmm. a one mana spell that discovers a choose one card, and also has a until the end of your turn, all your choose one cards have their effect combined, uh, which was basically never ever used. Yeah, no one mm -hmm. really used that. I saw it maybe once or twice, people trying it out, but no serious usage of that card. And they turned it into uh, one mana discover and uh, one mana nature spell that discovers two choose one cards, and those have both of the effects combined. And then you also shuffle that spell back into your deck. And then it's just, first of all, just a super fun card. It creates two almost treasure power level cards in your hand by itself already. So that is insane. very, very powerful. And it makes the deck infinite. So my, my thought process was, was just, hey, what if I played that card a lot and then win the game with it? So I made a deck that just ramps and draws cards and finds the mycelium and then plays it over and over until you overwhelm the opponent with your overpowered discovered cards and that actually worked out super well and of course there's also some other stuff in there like uh, board control and uh, some discount minions like that umbral owl is what i added recently and that new one mana four four that's dormant the naga something something stuff like that so that's what keeps... uh kelp keeper kelp keeper yes thanks kelp. So, yeah, that's how the deck works. You you ramp, you use Guff to get to ridiculous amounts of mana, and then you just spam Mycelium. In the end, you're Guff, you have only one card, or maybe even three cards, which are all Myceliums left in your deck, and then you just mm. play some card draw, or use the Guff hero power to draw, play the Mycelium two or three times per turn, and then just spam super overpowered cards until your opponent can't keep up anymore. Nice. And that just works. And it's super fun to play. Lots of decision making. You're not just playing everything on curve. And I'm also use also switched to using the Invigorating Bloom Hero Power that reduces the cost of all cards in your hand, the cost five or more by one, just to get to the ramp more quickly. You can also reduce stuff like the Umbral Owl early if you haven't played many spells yet. It just gets you to the important cards like Nourish, Guff, uh, and Miracle Growth that's going to get nerfed a bit earlier. I know mm -hmm. world. Really good. And so all of your draw is coming from these choose one cards and guff once you turn into guff. Um, are you running any extra? You're not running any like cold lights or anything like that? Or... No, not cold lights, but Druid has a, has like a ton of efficient card draw cards available. Yeah. Like, yeah. I even started running um, Guess the Weight now. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, Miracle Growth, Nourish. Yeah, there's Moonlit Guidance. Moonlit Guidance, there's exactly. There's if you want. And there's the, the I've aquatic been playing relatively recently, too. The biggest issue that I've had is not having hand space. So I don't think you need yes. to worry about draw. You run out of hand oh. space faster than you run out, run out of cards. Absolutely. No, mm -hmm. I'm thinking with, with goggles, you can empty your hand pretty good. And I've been on this quest personally uh, for a while to make mill work in duels um <laughs> it's been a failed Ooh. quest it's not, it's non-successful thus far but i'm intrigued anytime you say that a deck can go infinite um and uh i don't know it makes me it, it makes my little mill my little mill ears perk up Ooh, i'm gonna try that <laughs> out that, that's all it was my spidey senses I, I'm surprised that your instinct here is that the Jade Idol armor gain class, you want to beat that with <laughs> Mill? I think that's a that's an ambitious task. You, no, 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 no. I, I, I think you I'm want looking to for the counter. I'm looking mill. to... Right? Yes. Oh, you want to yes. be the Miller, not the Millie. Yes, right. yes, yes, oh. yes, yes, yes. I want... Because, you could because do that if you want your deck to be worse than it is now. <laughs> but possibly funner. You know, who knows? Yeah, who doesn't want to uh, see yeah, the it, enemy treasures go poof when they overthrow? Exactly. Uh, that, 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 that's, they that's, go poof when you kill them. 
Yeah. I, I do enjoy oh. this like silence mill priest <laughs> in standard. I, I can't pilot it at all. I, I'm like at like a 15% win rate with it, but it's pretty cool. Neither here nor there. It is. <laughs> uh, by the way, the reason that deck feels really hard to play and like a lot of work for not a lot of win rate is because that's true. Um, in the last seven <laughs> days at Diamond Through Legend, it's a 43% win rate. So don't yeah. think it's just you. Okay. okay yeah, it's good. tricky. But when it happens, it's cool. Yes. <laughs> I've dabbled in standard myself as well. On the first few days of the expansion, I was actually playing a Reno Shaman with pretty good success. Mm. But then the meta found the good decks, and now my deck cannot keep up anymore. So I just went away into my little duels bubble. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just yeah. hate net decking instead. The... I don't do it, so I'm I'm just gonna get stomped most of the time. <sighs> That's the issue in standard, right? There aren't as many cards, there aren't as many options, so it actually can be data mined relatively quickly, um, what the optimal situation is. Yeah. I don't think that's possible in duels. Um, I think that duels instead has like some duels influencers uh, who tweet out a couple of cool deck codes and then those get out into the world and that's what forms the meta. I do believe there is uh, some other balance out there that can uh, 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 be discovered on the player base side. As compared to standard, but that's, you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean, it's a big question about, like, player agency in the shape of the format and do outliers mm -hmm. really define things. And in duels, it's really just a question of, like, how hard is it to get to the broken thing or how easy is it to get to something that beats the broken thing? Because mm -hmm. I don't think there was really a way for the player to have agency over flame waves. I don't think that was a sort yeah. of thing where, like, you can just do a thing that beats that. And a passive is something that isn't inherent in draw variants, inherent in, in run variants. But when you hit it, you just, you kind of roll away with that run. Um, mm -hmm. There's something to be said as well in when a format stabilizes on the standard side as well, you at least are, you have a consistent target. But also it can just mm. get kind of boring. It's a lot less fun in duels. I think there's more inherent variance in what cards you're playing. But also that can sometimes mean that if there's one particular outlier and it's more variant inherently, it can be harder for you to find the thing that beat that or find a way to make your own deck work if you're doing the broken thing. So right. more dynamic, but not always in a way that's satisfying, but sometimes in a mm. way that's very satisfying and very refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's been interesting mm -hmm. to see over the past months. Yeah. The the comment you just made about player agency and flame waves, that was the problem, right? Mm -hmm. Is that you felt like you literally couldn't do anything. You were just watching you be beat. Um, and Same with the Reno Hero Power and Wildfire, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's if you yeah. your exactly. your best play was do not play minions this game, and that like minions are kind of important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and now we have this yeah. um, Plague Bringer Flamers of the Kirin Torchum that is similar by just throwing fireballs at you until but, you die. It's also not that. Cool but that has a time limit. Yeah. That has a real strict time limit. You know how many turns you've got, or you can out heal it, it's and so um, I, it's and you have to. You also have to nail your drafting and the the treasures. I've tried to get this deck a couple times, and almost every time I miss the second treasure. Um, and Plague Bringer is only what a thirty percent likelihood at mm -hmm. uh, at yes. uh, tier one. So I don't think that that deck. Is, if you get if you get everything, it is the absolute nuts, and you can absolutely burn the any opponent down no questions uh, i was asked. so sad i was at 11 wins with a really cool paladin deck i think and then i ran into that mm -hmm. deck that also had quelled allow and then uh, yeah just yeah just they oof. had a bigger monster truck than you had <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what i was gonna get at though is that right now it it the Humble Blessings package, if you draw it right, feels the same way. It's not it's not as consistent as Flame Waves is, but if you get Knight of Anointment on turn one, uh, coin uh, Humble Blessings on turn two into Anixia turn three, there's like no other deck that can beat that because it's just a reload of three threes every single turn on the board, right? And it's... It's a lot. It's really hard, and I, I hope that something is done. I, I I would prefer the holy tag being removed, um, so that you don't target a draw it, uh, add the RNG in there. But you know, whatever. Again, old man complaining about his card games, on, uh, yelling about it at clouds. No, it's. I think that asking for uh, 
for some inherent fail cases in the powerful things and for some variance in your gameplay is a pretty reasonable thing to ask for. And also, mm -hmm. I think it's probably something that the designers want. So it's probably something yeah. they're going to keep reaching for. Balance is difficult because you need the powerful, cool things. You need people to be able to get to them, but you also need it to not happen all the time. And then even when it does happen and you hit all your targets and it is a fun thing that's around for a little while, even a good thing, if you have it every day, becomes a bad thing. So they have yeah. to figure out how long do we let this thing hang out? How much control do players have over beating it? And then when do we decide it's time to do something else? So um, I'm curious about if Humble Blessings is also included in the balance change coming up. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe or it maybe not this Tuesday. Likely. Um, <laughs> it seems likely. Looking at chat, it seems very likely. <laughs> yeah. We have a source. Yeah. I hope, a source I, I close hope to the I... situation. <laughs> Excellent. Um, on a positive note, a deck that I, I did want to discuss a little bit that I've been messing around with and is really fun and satisfying to play and is board-based and requires interaction with your opponent and trading and uh, good old classic uh, uh, Hearthstone gaming is Drek'thar Mechmage. We were looking through, when we were looking through the card reviews, uh, we were mm -hmm. anticipating Mechmage of some sort to be really good. Um, but this Drek'thar one is especially good because you've mm -hmm. got the draw engine on it, uh, the two-mana hero power that draws a neutral minion that costs three or less, and it costs zero this turn. Um, we do that, you draw your Mech Warper, which mm -hmm. now costs zero, and you get your optimized polarity at turn one, where you're adding a bunch of one-mana magnetic uh, things to your hand, and you have your Mecha Shark uh, in there, so at all of a sudden, on turn six, if you time it out right, you can drop your Mecha Shark, which is a 4-3, uh, that every time you play a mech, it deals three damage to the opponent's board and face, like randomly distributed the same way as Flame uh, Waker used to do. And then you just sit there and nuke their face. It's machine gun mech mage. It's very cool. You're, you're drawing all these guys. You're putting, you're dredging. You're using the new cards. You got that sunken sweeper in there. You get Gaia the Colossal is really fun because you get a lot of board control and you get to use the new big fun toy. Um, I find Eni not very good in it. Um, I don't mm -hmm. think that she's necessary um, and I think that she's too slow. Um, but I do think that it's necessary to have... Um, oh man, what's that four mana? Uh, Technotron, Me Mechanotron, the one that, that gives all your whole board from Globins and Gnomes. Use your whole board, either Taunt, Divine Shield, or Wind Fury at random. Oh, Enhanso Mechano. Yep. Enhanso Mechano. There it is. Um, that thing is cool because that's a that's a blast from the past right there. And he is awesome if you've got a pretty wide board. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, if you have Gaia down, you can get some Wind Furies. It, it, it's very, very fun. It's very satisfying. And no two games are exactly the same because all the mechs are a little different. And so you got to sort of balance which ones play well together. Uh, but it's very, very fun. And there's quite a few of them out there. Um, you can you can go the distance with it. There's a lot of twelve win lists uh, available. I don't use Snow Chugger either. Snow Chugger is not very good. Um, but oh, you know, bombard you with frost buckets. It's my experience. Yeah, a lot a lot of That's duels cool. success. Yeah, yeah, you don't don't put too many death rattles in either. Mm -hmm. Um, I wouldn't yeah. put piloted shredder in. Um, because then you're going to be getting a lot of death rattle uh, treasures, uh, especially you'll get like mummy magic uh, as your passive very frequently, and you're very likely to get. There's several different death rattle buckets uh, out there that that'll be triggered by that. So you want to go more battle cry uh, and just you know passive abilities on them. Security automaton is amazing in this deck. Amalgam of the deep is amazing in this deck. The cool thing about it is it it's a nice mix. Uh, it's about half brand new cards from the the new set um and then there's a lot of throwbacks to like goblins and gnomes and of course like gorilla bots in there um go 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 find a list and have fun with it it's 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 easy to play you don't have to think too much um you get to trade it, it, it's it's good times it's good hearthstoning it's not toxic to play against um i don't believe i know you guys can tell me if you've played against it and you found it challenging um but it's 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 high quality uh, uh pg content for everyone to to enjoy on their own <laughs> yeah so i think i've it's only played the way that, that you guys talk about gaming these passives is just a part of this universe that i just don't know at all and it's really cool that you have this level of skill and awareness and and 
I just I just go to neon site. I just I just <laughs> copy your homework. Yeah, um, then, then it's not obvious. copy uh, copy us. Yeah. <laughs> I I didn't know about that until maybe two months ago, uh, and I was watching some of the the higher the the, the better streamers out there doing this. And um, uh, Old Wig did it really well and explained it on there. He had a pretty good article. There's, there's a couple of guys on Twitter that have taken duels very seriously. There was a, a, a group of Chinese guys who uh, literally put all of the buckets into a giant spreadsheet and figured out what the percentage offerings on all of them were. Um, and some people have been with uh, Firestone. They've been data mining the the passive offerings. That's how I knew, like you know, you have a thirty percent chance of getting any one passive at tier one. Um, yeah. It seems like that's at most. It seems like that's been the uh, the way that they figured that out. There's all sorts of stuff. People have really gotten into it, and it's it, they've gamed the system, right? They they this game is a roguelike where you're building a deck and it's not just the 15 you put in, it's really the buckets you're offered mm -hmm. uh, because you can absolutely destroy your uh, deck later on if you're getting absolute trash. Um, and if you know that there's, you know, they, there's a you know ton of big bruisers uh, buckets out there and whatever else and dragons buckets, you can target them by, by putting the original 15 in. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure there are more mechanics going on in the background that we know nothing about. Like, um, apparently there must be something that stops you from getting perfect buckets if you have literally just one synergy. So that's not quite possible to just go for one thing. That I think, and I noticed that right. If you if you play a soul lock, soul warlock. And I just put it all in this uh, soul shard generating cards. I, it's very frequently I don't see any of those cards in buckets until later when I already polluted my deck with other stuff and then they start showing up. And it's it has been the same for me with SI7 cards in Rogue. So, mm. and I think I've seen Artish say something like that. Like Shadow confirmed that somewhere that there's more stuff going on. But that's right. good. I don't well, want to know everything. I want to want things no. to stay mysterious. There, there, there needs to be a certain degree of randomness, right? Because there was yeah. a short period where we could one hundred percent game the system, and that's where that wacky, uh, 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 the 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 legendary one, the discs of legend slash. Uh, untapped potential deck came from where everyone was like crafting Laura Walker Cho and uh, all, you know all of the really big uh, health minions and yeah. getting a bunch of charge down and just blowing people up. It was beautiful, right? Like, because you could one hundred percent force both of those uh, guaranteed, was... and that became too much pro of a problem. And then you know we now have what we have. That was awful. I know people yeah, enjoy it, but exciting. I really unenjoy it. <laughs> It was <laughs> it was worse than Flameways for sure, but I don't think as many people were playing, or we weren't talking that much. I don't know, but it was pretty exciting. The the deterministic passive thing was so interesting to me because, like, I remember when they first implemented that system where you could just kind of have whatever you want, and mm -hmm. a lot of wild players in my timeline were like, "This is the best mode now," because you always got <laughs> to do the broken thing. Yeah, and, but but yeah, but then the people that were playing duels all the time was like, "This is not why I play duels." And so it just yeah, gets back exactly. to some really interesting questions about the bones of a format and what makes things fun for people. And do you cater to an established audience or do you try and expand to a new audience? I mean, it kind of reminds mm -hmm. me of the conversations around Arena. Like, do you revamp Arena into a different kind of draft format? Because it's been around forever and it kind of has a lot of anach anachronistic elements. But also there are people that play thousands of Arena games every day. So what do you do? And that's a it's a question about duels that they've struggled with a bunch of times. Like it's when you have the passives that are too often, it gets more boring. When you have the passives that yeah. aren't often enough, your deck doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What's the answer? I don't know if there is an answer. I think you're a pretty good spot right now where the pool ones like the, yeah. you get C one at most thirty percent of the time. That's fine, uh, but the pool twos are at least for many uh, synergies. Very, very deterministic. We see that for Divine Shields, you basically always get Avenging Armaments, which Death know, rattles. that's a bit too strong. You all basically always get Mummy Magic. You basically always get uh, the spell-specific ones, like Holy or um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Uh, Shadow. Least with Holy, it works. Or the Shadow, nature. I haven't tried. Or Fell. I've tried it with Fell. Fell, you always get the Fell mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. it, it's... The thing is, uh, those are frequently just not good enough. It's just a balance issue. <clears throat> yeah, it's... Uh, like, uh, I can't really tell what the passives um, are really supposed to be balanced, because, like, sometimes when you get the... When you get the the something like flame waves, that's obviously a spell school passive. That's a really huge mm -hmm. payoff. But yeah, the fell one. What does the fell one even do? There are two different ones. One is a hand buff thing. Uh, whenever you cast a fell spell, give the left and right most minion a hand plus two plus two. And the second one is you shuffle every time you play a fell spell. You shuffle in two of those in portals that Tamsin generates. That one. And then there's a terrible. tier one one also. Yeah. The tier was, one one is every, every time you cast a fell spell. <laughs> that might be the best one. <laughs> I think it is because the other one, the, the the shuffling the imps is really worthless. But the other one at tier one is every time you play a fell uh, spell, deal two damage to the uh, lowest health enemy. Yeah, and that includes the hero. Uh, right their hero. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember that was visually bugged for a while too. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it still is. It just goes mm -hmm. all over the place. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Like those passives are like bad. Those are those are mostly just not good. It's not worth doing. But then you can easily overtune those where it becomes just yeah. slam every deck or every card with the same school on it into the deck, and then you win every game. And so like there's mm -hmm. such a narrow balance line to be mm -hmm. drawn there. I had 100%. a pretty good fell demon hunter on very recently actually with the hand buff thing, because there are now some cards out there in demon hunter that are really good with that, like the Lady Zatheno. Which you buff her a bunch and then you play oh, some man. spells, she just annihilates everything. And then there's this Snaga dude that copies himself twice with Taunt. Mm -hmm. So if you buff that, that's also oh, super insane. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's some really yeah. crazy really like synergies with that. And of course, you can just get a random charge dude and just crunch someone. But um, overall, they're probably still way better passes than that. And. Especially so. eventually. Like, I don't mind taking these things in casual, but yeah. I'd be really surprised to see these show up on neon site in like the twelve win bracket. And I'd be surprised if people started net decking it. They would play it if they were like mm -hmm. if you're a dual streamer and you're looking for something different to do, then that mm -hmm. is the reason to play these specifically because they're off meta, not because it's any kind of like player induced balancing of the format like you were talking about earlier, Matt. Oh. It's more just like I'm doing this because it's different and I want to and it's yeah. cool and I want that sense of discovery, even though I'm gonna run into the thing that I know is dominating this format and I'm probably gonna lose to it, but maybe I'll have fun against mm -hmm the other stuff that isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that that's why I really enjoy Regis Kilbin's stream so much um, is he's out there uh, trying he's every he's wacky. Well, he's the goat, right? But he also is trying out these wacky things, right? He's not sitting there just trying to get to 12 wins each time. He, he knows how to play the mode well enough, but you know, he'll get four, five, six, seven wins and be totally thrilled because he got his wacky combo off. And there's all of these things out there that you can explore. And I, I, I um, you know, there are, other streamers like Agent Croak as well, who's doing amazing work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the 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 adding the the um, the variety and finding these combos and using these lesser used treasures is really valuable uh, for you know long form content. Who's Monk? So yeah. so I um, might have gotten you your second guest ever on the show, or rather, he might have brought himself along. Hey, Attack, <laughs> say hi. Hey, oh. sorry for Oh my in. gosh! Oh my god! Uh, <laughs> now, now, now our pictures are broken. Uh, hold on. We may have broken the stream, and we may have broken my co-host's <laughs> minds here, because uh, I might have been multitasking a little bit, and uh, someone here will have to talk to PR on Monday morning. But hello, Atesh, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> no, no, I, Fabio, I talked to Fabio ahead of this. I did. Way ahead of this. So, oh. As, as you're typing Thanks. an email to Fabio right now, is that... no, 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 not at all, Fabio. If you uh, if you hear this, you know we talked about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that that is a nice welcome, surprise. Man. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for joining the stream. Uh, love the name, Monk. Yes, keeping yeah, keeping it real. My, yeah, uh, uh, I'm not too loud, oh. right? Everything's no, not cool. at all. It's, yeah, seems great. You're good. Uh, yeah, so I've been, I was listening I've been to you this for the past 15 minutes. Podcast. My co-hosts were trying to keep like flow going, and and we're just disrupting all of that. But you said you had a lot of thoughts all day. 
and you were screaming. Yeah, man. I well, I mean, I'm I'm sitting here listening to you guys talk about duels, and I'm like, man, it, it felt like a like a like a prison. I was like, I wanna <laughs> I, I wanna be in this conversation, uh, and so here we are. There we are. Well, there he is. So so enlighten us. What are your thoughts, man? We can't we can't wait to hear. You, the, the floor well, is I mean, yours. You know, uh, what do we want to talk about? You guys want to talk about maybe some nerfs coming up, right? Like, uh, I think you guys hit a lot of the feeling, like a, a lot of what I was feeling on the head, right? Like, there are some decks, uh, Elise being one of them, that's been kind of terrorizing a lot of players, and um, and so that with you know like humble blessings for instance maybe i messed up whoops uh and uh, we messed <laughs> up uh, maybe humble blessing will be going back uh and and a, and, and a handful of other changes too uh, and so uh, hopefully you guys will see those pretty soon um and so you know what else what else we can we we can talk about anything you you uh you guys were talking about the uh you know, having like a hundred heroes in duels, like what would that be like? You know, uh, I constantly think about adding, like, what adding more heroes to duels would be like. Uh -huh. um, and so, one of the things that I find interesting that you were talking about was saying, like, well, there would be some overlap, but it'd be kind of okay because, like, you know, I've got uh, all these different ways of building a deck with these like different hero powers or so on and so forth. Like that—that that was one of the things that. When Brad and I were looking at the uh, League of Explorers and saying, like, oh, we could add these, there was some crossover with, like, Elise mm -hmm. and Omu, right? Like, they both have, like, hero powers that that focus on the more druidy things, like gaining attack or armor, right? Or, like, in Omu's case, right, uh, he, he doesn't necessarily do that exact same thing, but there's a lot of, you know, cross-pollination between them. But, you know, one of the things that, that we lean on is the ability of having, you know, uh, not just the multiple class to shake it up, but the signature treasures, right? We really lean on the signature treasures to help point that hero towards specific archetypes. And I think there's some yeah. cases where we're really successful. And then I think there's other cases where, you know, it needs work. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, that's definitely a thing that, uh, you know, we're always keeping a pulse on, especially in the, the world of new heroes, um, which is a really exciting world to be in, I think. So do you think the signature treasures are your biggest focus? Because in my mind, uh, the things that, I mean, you, you correct me if I'm wrong here, but the things that stand duels out from standard Hearthstone are A, different heroes and hero powers, uh, the signature treasures, the buckets, and the passive treasures. Um, obviously, the progression and the matchups are different, but that's what really forms the core of the gameplay experience, right? Like those those things that are hyper powered. Would you say the signature treasures and the hero design is your your biggest focus and the thing that you prioritize, or all of those passives that are available to multiple different heroes and sometimes do end up dictating the meta? Is that a thing, or is is this is that not really a a thing you think about in those terms? No, I, I think that, uh, you know, it's not just whether or not it's a point of consideration. It also yeah. has a lot to do with, you know, what's kind of our goal with that hero. Like, sometimes it one hero leans into it a little bit more than others. Like, for instance, Strekthar and Vandar, as an example, their signature treasures completely dictate everything they're capable of, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, a hero like Omu... You know, signature treasures kind of like help inform your archetype, but you're not dead in the water if you pick a you know a different signature treasure. A lot of signature mm -hmm. treasures were kind of designed as like these, um, you know, designed as bombs, right? To to give mm -hmm. you like a big momentum swing and and help you mm -hmm. really like push forward for for a W, right? To to get that win. And so a lot of times, you know, it, it depends on what the goal of the hero is. And I think that's the context that's really important to us. Mm. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, I actually have a Google Doc that I... Uh, uh, last edit was on February 15th, but it's, it's titled Questions for Atesh uh, oh. that I every now okay. and then, uh, if I'm uh, 
uh, playing a game and I'm like, what the hell is this all about? I want to ask Atesh this the next time, the, the first time he's on the podcast. Um, and so I'm going to, these are, some of these are a little dated, um, but, but I do actually have three, three questions. Uh, when you're going through bucket design, specifically why, why not? Or is that just sort of like the, Hey, these are all silly, amazing uh, combos, or is there like a specific goal that you're trying to get here? Like, has anyone ever picked Blood to Ikor and made that successful, or like Dark Moon Rabbit? Like, do you, do you know if people are using those why why not buckets? Or I, I'm curious about how buckets come about in general beyond the silly wacky ones. Like, there isn't a hand buff bucket for Paladin yet. Um, is that a thing that's on your radar for the future? Um, do you do you try to develop the buckets in conjunction with the heroes and the treasures to sort of guide the goals, like you were saying, of the heroes? Like, what what talk about buckets for a little bit because I think it's an important uh, topic. Mm-hmm. So uh, first, I want to talk about why why not and and why it exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when uh, when duels was in the early stages of development, uh, you know. Uh, Brad and I, who is totally a real person, uh, Brad is. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, look, invite him on. You already have one special I guest. Uh, I think Brad. You know, am but... I not special? N- two, no, I'm saying you know, I mean, special episode. Episode. two of us special guests, and then you know, if, if we call Brad, <laughs> that'd can. be a whole nother yes. thing. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, We'd be a number. But, but the uh, the thing is, uh, when when we were making buckets. <laughs> uh ben you know uh ben lee our game director Mm -hmm. who uh you know he was involved with duels as were a lot of people and he he kind of was just like hey i want to make some buckets and we're like yeah sure and uh and all of a sudden (laughs) like we started seeing like we saw a bucket with three snow flipper snow flipper penguins and uh it was titled why sure why why not and we're like, oh, okay, this is cool. Like, this is funny. And so we kind of just kept that, like, that rolling with mm-hmm. the buckets as we're going forward making them. So every set, right, like, there will be a, you know, there tends to be, like, a special legendary card in every set that's, like, really cool, but they're just really hard to build around. Or maybe they just do so much by themselves. For instance, like, the Dreamer, uh, Lich King is also one of them, right? Where, like, Lich King does a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. by generating cards and has a really awesome presence and so we i find that like cards that fit that archetype belong in you know why why not uh one of the w- one of the stories about buckets is sometimes uh bucket archetypes will be created from you know why why not uh one example of which is baron's chat uh baron's chat was originally mm-hmm. just the, uh was going to be buckets of like sure why why not but uh, we need to find a shorter way of saying that for for this conversation. We'll we'll refer to it as uh, the why not bucket. There we go. That's a little mm-hmm. bit shorter. So the the, uh, <laughs> the Baron's Chat bucket was originally in that in that bucket where you know Man Crick. There's three Man Cricks in there, and then there's three of the mm-hmm. towers in there. And then you know when I started looking at those two things, I was like, oh man, this is you know it actually just be funnier if we made it a whole new bucket type for this Mm -hmm. and that's how baron's chat was born and so uh when creating a bucket there's a couple things that that happens when we're involved in that process the first of which is you know is is this a new card that we need to support in duels and the answer Mm. when we see a set is yes and that is the first criteria Mm. for making a bucket the second of which is is there you know some theme or mechanic that we could build around this bucket that makes it you know pretty cool and that's you know that's why uh in my opinion baron's chat is kind of a slam dunk because it's like it hits on the theme there's this like this tower control mechanic that now you could build a a baron's chat control deck and just totally have fun with your baron's uh, experience right um and and a lot of times the buckets are designed from a perspective of, you know, not just making sure it's supported, but trying to, you know, I, I want to make sure that the buckets are pretty usable. A lot of the times I know this is, you know, I, I'm sure I'll get uh, some flack for this because I know I know some people in <laughs> chat 
Uh, you know, my buckets aren't perfect. Uh, you know, I'm working on them. I'm working yeah, on them. Uh, they'll get better. They'll get better. He but introduced the... dynamic replayability into the mode because sometimes they're more cohesive and structured and precise towards what you're building, and sometimes you have to work around what you're given. Right? Yeah, yeah. Dynamic exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, can I throw but, in something? You know, yeah, of because course. I played um, Legends of Runeterra a bunch, and they have an interesting drafting system for their um, arena-like mode expedition, and in that um, there are actually different types of buckets, like over classes essentially, where you get uh, synergy picks and you get completely wild picks, where super where anything can show up and stuff like that, like. Would that be possible ever? Like, say after game one, we get a synergy bucket, so there's always something good in there. But after game two, we'll only get wild buckets that don't have anything to do with our deck, and we have to deal with it. And everyone goes through that and has to manage those bad cards in that deck. Yeah, I, I think that the uh, the short answer that I'm going to lean on for this one is uh, I have seen that system. I think it's a really cool system. Mm -hmm. I think that our current bucket system uh, it needs needs a little bit of help. It has a lot of room to improve, right? And so uh, clearly, I um, I can't say you know, you know there you know clearly there's there's nothing currently you know planned to announce today, right? Or yeah, right, <laughs> to talk about. But we well, didn't you plan know, for today but, when no, we found no, out you were coming on the show an hour into it. <laughs> Surprise to you! Surprise to you! Uh, but I can't. You know, one of the things that I've been very transparent with is, you know, I know buckets can be better, and they are a thing that I want to make sure that we improve. Uh, so, I, I think that that's the that's what I want uh, to you guys to to have. You know, on the conversation of buckets, because mm -hmm. uh, I do want them to be better. Perfect. I'm glad to hear it's on your bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> it's a it's a really big list. <laughs> <laughs> big buckets. But I wanna somebody somebody mentioned it and I, I gotta talk about it now. Uh frost spells are totally fire. So uh with the fire buckets or the big spell buckets, I think, yeah, the fire buckets, because there's like dragons and stuff. Um uh, there is there's some frost spells, there's some dragons, right? And and people see like Hey, Tesh, Waggy Finger, you know, those aren't those aren't fire spells. I know. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to try out a different method of building buckets where I was, you know, trying to build like triads that kind of worked with that archetype. Mm -hmm. And sometimes mm -hmm. you find, you know, like on in wild or in standard, sometimes you're playing fire mage and you have a couple frost spells, right? You know, because they ha they offer something else too, you know. The, mm -hmm. the gameplay experience and so uh that's kind of that's why that bucket is structured in that way and getting that feedback of like oh hey dude the uh, frost spells in my fire buckets get them out of here that's helpful for me to know right uh so i appreciate <laughs> that feedback <laughs> <laughs> oh okay. god yeah like some of this feedback must be really obvious and... Yeah. Well, okay. the next question that I had on the <laughs> list there um, was, are win rates more closely correlated to treasures or to the class, to the selected hero at the beginning? Um, so, like, for, I, I, I guess I, I want to know is, like, was Flame Waves the most busted uh, uh, strategy laid on, or is this change with the meta and what's going on at these high win conditions uh, these you know 10 11 12 uh uh matches oftentimes you're seeing most of the same like three or four decks and is that usually tied to the the hero powers is it tied to the treasures is it tied to something else or is this a totally off base question uh so i think i think there's a little bit to this that uh, i can and i want to answer so the, mm -hmm. the the first part is like yes treasures definitely impact the strength and viability of a class Right, uh, you know, it's no secret we buffed a bunch of treasures with the last, right? Um, but mm -hmm. there's also the other facet to it, which is you know the cards that people have in their decks also dictate their strength, 
And one of the things that, you know, uh, duels is always, you know, my, myself or Brad are always trying to be very conscious of is the prevalence of things in standard and wild, because mm. those echo into duels, right? And mm. if something is so powerful in those modes, we kind of expect it to be very powerful in duels to some way, right? And because, you know, all the knobs we have to tune, um, it's to tune around those cards in that ecosystem. And so, you know, we're kind of reactive to how, uh, you know, how the, the uh, final design team shakes up uh, wild and, uh, and standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did they buff Kazakasan for you? <laughs> you, you know, uh, I don't think so. Uh, but it definitely <laughs> broke one of my favorite decks. One of my favorite decks to play was uh, Infinite Arcane Kazakusan. And so it mm -hmm. was just Mage mm -hmm. with a draw package with Infinite Arcane. And so mm -hmm. I would just get to Infinite Arcane, blow up my deck, discover Kazakusan, and just play it and fill my deck with treasures and then look fish for cards that draw and draw a bunch of treasures. So now that doesn't work anymore. Cool Thanks, idea. Team. <laughs> I mean, you could play some dragons first. You just need to discover Kazakasan I mean, four times and then another one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, I'm you really... build your deck with Fairy Dragon and Amalgam of the Deep, and uh, there's there's got to be some cheap Mage Dragons, right? There's something going on there. Onyxian War yeah, is pretty know, good. I've heard. I think I think with Azure Explorer. Kazakhstan, I think with Kazakusan, I'm a little bit more concerned with the prevalence of uh, a lot of the dragon decks that already exist now in duels. So, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, that it, preemptively, I'm keeping an eye out. It might be fine. Mm -hmm. It's probably fine. If it's you know, not fine, you know, you know we'll this, know what happens. There's this thing that starts in <laughs> well, Dr and it ends in E. That that could, you know. Uh, I, I have uh, no idea what you're talking about. Me neither. <laughs> not not the not the thin, not the smallest idea. <laughs> I just love that you're staying on brand. Where like you're concerned going into this patch that, that Dragon Shaman might be too good. I just I want to live in the world that you're in. <laughs> Man, Dragon Shaman is. I'm telling you. Okay, so wait. I gotta I gotta say where this meme started because it's hilarious. Okay. So uh, when duels first launched. Uh, you know, board control. You know, one one of the one of the homies. He was playing duels, and Brad and I were in his chat, and we're like, "Play Dragon Shaman. It's so good." <laughs> He's like, "It's not a thing," and we're like, "No, dude. It's it's totally a thing. We made sure of it. Trust us." And so he played Dragon Shaman and went three and zero, or I went zero and three, and Brad and I were in stitches. Uh, and so ever since <laughs> then, Dragon Shaman just kind of like became a meme between us and. Uh, but you know, any chance I get, I try to play Dragon Shaman, and now it's it's becoming a reality. Yeah, just remember when I dragon. just remember when I tried it for the first time on stream when you were there and I got five wins. Yeah, that was it. That was a huge day. You know, that that, yeah. that to see how far Dragon Shaman has come, <laughs> and now I got twelve <laughs> with it. So there we go. It might just be that Asian is better than Boar Control. That might be it. <laughs> oh, no way. Oh, oh. I never claim I'm good at anything. Always undersell. Nah, no one's no no one's gonna shoot your horn but you, man. <laughs> um, the uh, the next question I have on this list, not really a question, more of a comment. I think uh, the uh, card SI seven scout in Vandar, uh, his hero power. The, the card reads uh, one mana, uh, two, two, death rattle, add a random card to your hand from your opponent's class. Um, if you play this against a Vandar, you get a coin. And if you play it like, you know, against a rogue or whatever, you're going to get rogue cards. Is there any chance that we could just say from a random other class? I'll think about it. Okay, Yay! thank you. <laughs> mm, uh, no, I think mean, I. No. No, it doesn't mean no. I think that, you know, there's uh there is a possibility that if that is what is consistent with the rest of the game and it is a thing that we missed, it is possible that it will change. Uh mm. possible. 
right? Uh, I, I, I do find it a little bit funny that you get a coin, uh, but you know what I think is <laughs> funny is not what is always best for the game. <laughs> So. <laughs> Why don't you just told us for like I, ten minutes how you make buckets based around what you think is funny? No, no, no. That's the why. Why not? That's a little bit different. That's a lot of it different. <laughs> I I remember. Oh, Daniel's in chat now. I remember back in Blackrock Mountain when you tried to get class cards from the non-class heroes. You got tail swipes. What happened to those? For my now deal for damage. Are they gone? Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> faded into the mist, just like I always do. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. That's my answer. Uh, <laughs> it's totally legit. <laughs> I don't uh, know, so, man. Perfect. So, okay, I have a question for you. That's not about tail swipe, I promise. So, uh, I mean, it's, it, we were talking earlier, and you mentioned uh, you were you were talking in chat about. Um, about uh, unlocks, right? About yes. unlocks and about how unlocks. you know, yeah. So, so it's so now is your chance to to weigh in how you feel about the the per hero unlocks. And I know it's different for Drek and Van, and you change those, and it's different now in the new heroes. The Tombs of Terror unlock system, I think, is really great. Um, but I'm just curious what you think about the concept of them in general, and about uh, motivation versus a chore. I believe is the phrase that you used in chat. Yeah. So. Unlocks are a thing that that uh, I always find, especially with myself in games, like uh, kind of weighing between how much am I doing this because I'm enjoying it versus how much. Oh god, I was having and, this go. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, I think that there's some circumstances where it was successful, and others where it doesn't. I think I think uh, you know uh, Matt brought up that. Hey, you know, there's there's so much available to new players that if you go in and everything's unlocked, you know, it hits analysis paralysis and, and, and that's a negative feeling, negative experience for the player. And I agree to an extent, um, but I also think that, you know, 200 times to play a card to unlock something is a little bit much, right? Uh, a lot of it much. Uh, and you uh, so so uh, cleverly pointed out, hey, man, I don't want to play a million dredge cards. I get it. But, you know, the thing the thing with unlocks that that I keep thinking about is what's the intention of why you have to do this? Like what is it should it is it supposed to give you this feeling of power progression? Uh at its core, that's what, you know, that's what I hope. That's what they're intended to be. But, you know, as as people get excited when they see a new hero and they log in, they see they can't play the game. And I think the the most you know the worst use case is you know uh, I'm I'm a player who you know I haven't played duels in a while and oh man I see you know Croak Regis Zeddy playing duels having so much fun I wanna I'm I'm gonna log in and play duels and, and try this out and uh, they get on and they see this really cool deck that people are using and they don't have access to those cards and it's a lot for it's a lot to ask of the player to say hey now before you get to play the game you envision and you want to play you know you're gonna have to play for a couple hours or longer to unlock this mm -hmm. thing if you're lucky and you rolled that hero and so i think that you know the the idea is focusing on unlocks that make sense without demanding so much of the player's time and uh, so I, I would expect to see more stuff like the uh, League of Explorers than like Drekthar and Vandar uh, in the future. Mm. And, and okay. that's with the goal of letting people, you know, get in and playing with their stuff a lot easier. And that's one of the reasons why having the dual unlock for Old Doom and for the League of Explorers, right, uh, was so was so important to us. Because, you know, in our minds, we're like, oh, you know, players mm -hmm. that already unlock mm -hmm. this stuff in Old Doom, they're going to, we're, we're going to ask them to farm these things again? Like, that doesn't feel, mm -hmm. that doesn't feel very cool. That's not very cash money of us to do, right? And so uh, <laughs> that's where the dual unlock was born. And so uh, I can't stress en enough how awesome it was to get that into the game. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I love the nice fact that like that was something that like people I spoke to were really positive about of just being able to do it, and they were able to grind those out if they hadn't done them in the single player before the patch went live. Um, mm-hmm. There was a bit of confusion around like when they had to do it because there were times when they would launch a run, click a hero, see the unlock, go unlock it in single player, and still not have access to it. But like the you know it's a small growing pain. I think that people will get more used to over time. It's still better to like have less work than more work here. And the idea of power progression is cool. It's just a question of like, if I was guaranteed to get that hero back the next time that I, as soon as I unlock the hero power, like if I knew that after I play my 20th dredge card, my next one will always have Finley, that Mm -hmm. would be cool. But instead I see it. I want to play it. I have a deck list loaded up. I got to do something else. Then I hope that even after I unlock it, that I get Finley back too. Yeah. And, and, and that's, and that's a low, right? Like that doesn't, that doesn't feel good. So that's, that's definitely a thing that, you know, going forward, we want to tame as much as possible. Nice. Cool. Um, yeah, I loved the way you guys did the League of Explorers unlock and the announce. It um, it gave me genuine excitement to go back. I had already completed everything and cleared mm-hmm. it all out. It, they yeah. were by far my favorite modes when they were announced. And I went back and I played it for a solid like three or four days, um, just messing around on my phone and... Uh, it was also during, I think, the, the height of the Flame Waves hate uh, era, so I was still getting that that roguelike duels experience, and I felt like I was like practicing a little bit, kind of. I was I was I was testing out mm-hmm. strats and stuff and see, seeing what would work, and it was it was it was a nice nostalgic experience, and it was it was it was lovely, and I, I really uh, encourage more of that in the future. Yeah, that was really it. cool. I'm just so happy we got the league. Like, it's still my favorite. A theme for the for expansion, like the old Doom trailer, is still unbeaten. It's just so good. I'm still practicing that, <laughs> singing that. <laughs> it's gonna take a while until I get it down. <laughs> it's not easy. Yeah. Um. You have any more yeah. questions for our guest here? Yes. Maybe we have time for one more. I. I... If I had prepared, yeah, I, I had lightly prepared months ago, but I didn't know. I, I would have thought of uh, a specific thing to it's say. It's frozen again, uh-huh. huh? Is there anything? You... No. no. Atesh, is there anything you want to share with the community? What, what, what's been your highlight of duels from the past few months? What, 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 what's what been your funnest deck to play? What's 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 going on? Well, let, let the world know more about Atesh. I mean, uh, I loved playing my Kazaku-san Infinite Arcane deck uh, that's going to be going away <laughs> soon. Uh, so I'm a little bit sour. It's going to be Kazakagan? Yeah? Kazakagan. Yeah. Uh, so, so, you know, that's uh, that makes me sad a tesh. But, you know, I I really love Silverhand Paladin. I think that, like, that's Ooh. always just been a fantasy of, like, a, a, like a, a power fantasy of Paladin that you know, I have always enjoyed that archetype. So getting to mm-hmm. play duels whenever I want, uh, I'm very, I'm very like, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying. I should say the uh, new uh, druid with this tre. So there's this this druid treasure. I can't pronounce the the name of it. I just can't. I just can't pronounce the uh, marvelous. I can't do mycelium. It. Mycelium. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Yeah. Brad is Brad has told me a billion times, and I still to this day I can't. <laughs> what? It. As Watch the as, right, as, gotta, opposed to your, as opposed to your you cilium, it's mycelium. Maybe uh, that right. Helps. So, <laughs> so what do they fill balloons with? Helium. So, cilium rhymes with helium, and it's your. Celium, so it's my celium M- M- museum. I can't do it. I just can't do it. Yes, you know, it's... exactly. Slam dunk. <laughs> now Perfect. I see why frost spells ended up in fire buckets. I, I get it. Now. <laughs> uh, and why big spells were mix for a while, huh? That's right. Uh, spells for mechs. That was an oopsie. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad we resolved that one. But with uh, figured it out. with that that de- with that uh, signature treasure redesigned uh playing choose one uh omu has been a lot of fun as well yeah have you ever tried the um uldum quest for omu yes i did a yeah. few um, times it's pretty on fun. potential i forgot about exactly. that card yeah that's fun yeah i'm playing then, around with some of those uldum quests right now but uh but to answer to to kind of go back to the 
the yeah. initial question of you know the the thing that I enjoy most uh, working on duels is just it's so much fun because we have a lot of freedom to do crazy things not just in gameplay but you know on on our side we get to be very reactive with the community as well as transparent right mm -hmm. and that that is a blessing afforded to us and uh, that makes making duels a ton of fun. That's awesome. A, a um, humble blessing. A humble blessing. Yes, yeah, a, a <laughs> humble blessing. Uh, man, whoops. <laughs> Don't worry, it'll be fine. It's... It'll be fine. <laughs> Thank you. you. It, was, I... it, it was a fun experience for a moment there, and then you figured out maybe it won't stay fun forever, and forever meaning mm -hmm. like a week and a half or so. Like, mm -hmm. You got it, you got it. Um, I oh. do have one last question for you from from Fusro Dan in the chat. What happened to Korak? Why did you ban Korak? Oh, good question. Would you look at the time? Uh, you know, this is really uh, it's been a pleasure, gentlemen. Uh, I I got. <laughs> Reading this might uh, hash, this so okay. Just this Korak. is so Korak. We'll talk about him. We'll we'll we, we'll uh, we'll solve the mystery. So I'm not going to name any names, but somebody that I know very very near and dear to my heart was playing Korok in a lot of play tests, mm -hmm. and I was getting constant feedback about how helpless it felt to be you know co infinitely Korok against. And if you didn't have the answer to it, like even if you win, it's still a bad experience. And so uh, I then, you know, I and Brad together as one, we decided to ban Korok. It wasn't just uh, in a, a Tesh level cowboy decision. We both, you know, every ban, every buff, every nerf, Brad and I sync up on, talk about it, mm -hmm. go over why we think it's warranted or unwarranted, and we move forward from there. Um, but if you ask Fusro Dan, uh, why they think I banned Korok, it's because they love Korok. And uh, that's not that's not true. I mean, yes, they love it, but we banned it because the infinite experience, uh, it felt pretty helpless to play. Yeah, I see why. I, I, I'll add that it can mm. also feel very helpless when you have a board full of Koraks and you can't play anything anymore. And for some reason, they don't really help. Because they're getting burned out and they don't have enough attack. <laughs> that has happened to me yeah. a few times. Because I had what um what's it called again? Deathly death. So it's completely impossible yeah. to get rid of my Corex. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um uh, well Atesh, we really sincerely want to thank you for your time. Time and hat. Hat, thank you for setting this up and, and coordinating uh everything. I know we, we wow. recorded at a different time and we're in a, a weird spot and everything, uh, but it's uh, it's been so amazing to have both of you on here. Um, we we would love to have you back sometime in the future. Uh, mm -hmm. Duels has been such a joy. The the, the joy that I've had uh, from Duels lately has been finding this little community that we're sort of developing on online of uh, people who like wacky, silly stuff and who aren't really raging all the time. Um, so I I, I, I love. I love laughing. I think that's an important thing that we got to do um, uh, together while we're playing our, our card games and, and, and not shouting at the clouds too much. So I really, really, really appreciate both of you guys coming on. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, coordination is a strong word for what happened today, but uh, I'm happy <laughs> with being like a decent planned pool one and Atesh was the pool two ultra rare. Like that's definitely how this went down. Uh, he came on, you know, so we figured this out an hour into the show, but like just having the insight here while we're talking, you know, so how... How often when it's like you're talking about the game and the the one of the guys that makes is like, hey, can I come too? Yeah. yeah. It's rad. So, it's yeah, magic. Thanks so much for having me. And, and Atesh, I'm glad you were able to finagle it. And Fabio, if you're listening to this, he did good. Thank you for allowing him to do this. Yes, thank you. Oh, I'm so, so happy. Well done. It was beautiful today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm I'm really glad uh, I was able to jump in. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for the surprise, but also <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I, <laughs> had a, had I a great time. Apologies can be waived this time. I think it's okay. Indeed, okay. indeed.
Absolutely, uh, not 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 a negative surprise. An absolutely thrilling, positive surprise. So uh, uh, appreciate it so much. Um, and for everyone else, uh, look forward to those uh, uh, balance patches on Tuesday. Um, and we'll we'll be here next Friday probably, uh, uh, Croak and I, to to talk it all through and and see what's going on in, in the duels meta next week. Um, but until yeah. then, thanks so much for listening, and we'll uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye. Bye bye.